From easily winning a record-breaking 22nd Grand Slam to maintaining his world number one position for a consecutive 384 weeks, it shouldn't come as a surprise that Novak Djokovic is regarded as one of the best tennis players in the entire world. And the player happens to feel the same way. When the tennis player was being interviewed as usual after a match and was asked whether he believed he was the greatest player, the answer was a confident yes. Djokovic was questioned why else they would be discussing his Grand Slams and making history if he wasn't at the top of his game. This is a man whose father handed him a racket at age 4, and he's been honing his skills since. Fast forward, he's proved that he's the best statistically. So what's left to do? When he was asked if this meant that he was the best player ever, the player was pretty logical about this. He felt he couldn't compare himself to the past greats simply because of how much the game had changed. Whether it was the equipment they used or the technology available. The balls, the rackets, and even the courts, the varying conditions made it pretty impossible to compare today's players to those from 50 years ago. What a wonderfully thought out and humble response. While he may not be willing to say that he's the GOAT, his numbers prove otherwise. Djokovic has gone on to win his millionth trophy. I'm exaggerating. It's his 22nd, but that's still a lot. The only tennis player with 22 Grand Slams is everyone's favorite Rafael Nadal. Now, the Serbinator won his 22nd Grand Slam at the start of this season, when he beat Stefano Tsitsipas at the Australian Open in straight sets. That means he's now neck and neck with Nadal. And get this, after the match, Stefanos was quick to label him as the GOAT. Awkwardly enough, Tsitsipas later backtracked on his comments. But if Djokovic continues performing the way he has, he'll definitely deserve that title. But he's got more accomplishments under his belt. He's one of only three players in history to have won 10 trophies in a single event, and has 10 Australian Open titles, while Nadal has 14 French Open ones. Margaret Court has 11 Australian Open titles too, by the way. Then there's his longest winning streak record too. With this win, he had 28 wins in a row and surpassed Andre Agassi's 26 wins in a row between 2000 and 2004. At this point, he has spent 384 weeks in the top spot. No one's even come close to maintaining such a winning streak. I mean, Roger Federer spent 247 weeks at the top, which is great too. But the difference between the numbers is crazy. And if things go as planned, the Serb may be able to retain his position at the top. At this stage, Djokovic had a 365-point lead over Carlos Alcaraz, and he's bound to hold on to it. Although one thing stands in his way, his elbow. The 35-year-old has announced that he has dropped out of the Madrid Open because he wasn't feeling it. This will not affect his ranking for the time being, though. For one, he has the points to maintain a lead. And then there are other factors, such as Alcaraz not gaining rank despite winning the Barcelona Open. He was the defending champion, so his position remains unchanged. And even if he does win the Madrid Open, matters will remain the same as he's defending that title too. And while winning back-to-back -back titles will not affect him or Djokovic, it'll bring the young champion close to the Serb with just five points separating the two. Alcaraz may be able to end the season as the world number one once again. That is, if Djokovic's injury continues to give him trouble. Novak has already explained that his elbow has troubled him quite often. And while it was surely a matter of concern, it wasn't so bad as to keep him out of the game. So he showed up, but he lost to fellow Serbian Dusan Lajovic in the first round. The shocking defeat at the Banja Luka Open highlighted just how troubling the situation was. The very next week, he announced that he would be pulling out of the Madrid Open too. As expected, everyone was shocked. And fans were quick to notice that this would be the very first time that neither Nadal, who's won a record eight Madrid Opens by the way, or Djokovic would have been playing in the tournament since 2002. The Madrid Open has featured one of the big three of tennis since its inauguration. Could this worrisome injury signal the end of one of the greatest eras of tennis ever? It may, but I'm choosing to ignore it. But what does this say about his status at Roland Garros? 
we can't say. In 2021, Djokovic dropped out of Madrid and went on to win Roland Garros. But times have changed. His injury isn't a small issue, but something more serious. He's also older, and he'd be entering the clay court season with a 2-2 record. None of this makes me very optimistic. Although his opponents can see that winning may be easier without him, Alcaraz is focused on winning the Madrid Open just as he did in Barcelona. The 19-year-old acknowledged that many players felt that the pressure reduces when the best players aren't in the competition. And so it makes it easier to win. But he also acknowledged that all of his opponents were good, not just the big three. At this stage, he felt any player could win a title. The fact that some people were competing and others weren't had little impact on him. He wasn't thinking about favorites and would just deal with the competition match by match. This seems like the right strategy if Carlos hopes to become world number one this year as well. And while the top ranking may not be his primary objective, he'd very much like it nonetheless. Could this mean that Djokovic's reign is finally at an end? The world number one hasn't offered any assurances over the last two tournaments. Right before his loss in Banja Luka in the round of 16 at Monte Carlo, Lorenzo Massetti had already defeated him. At this stage, he will be showing up for Roland Garros with two wins on clay. Provided his elbow injury is better, of course. Djokovic was questioned about his loss. His response was logical and analytical. He didn't blame his elbow, but rather his many mistakes and his passive play. But even his two wins don't make me too optimistic because he wasn't at his best then either. But maybe it's all in my head. Djokovic has been on a break from clay for quite some time. And with the years, it's only bound to get tougher and tougher for the Serb. This begs the question, what's the reasonable limit to which Djokovic can push his elbow? Not much if I'm being realistic. At his age, Djokovic wouldn't want to injure himself in any major way. Because, like it or not, it gets harder to recover as you grow older. And it's much more dangerous if you're stressing a part of your body that's already giving you warning signs. To play for hours on clay with an injured elbow and hope to come out of it unscathed? Seems impossible. His forehands have been having trouble, and if he knows what's good for him, Djokovic won't gamble on his joints. The fact that he's elected to drop out of Madrid is bad enough, but keep in mind his past performances and his prospects for the season don't look too great. Then again, he's not an ordinary man. He's surprised us many times before. Federer and Nadal were at the top of their game when he came out of nowhere to show he was just as good as either of them, if not better. So if there's anyone who knows how to best prepare their bodies for a grueling event, it's this guy. And that's all I know about Djokovic's claim to be the best tennis player today.